Hello and welcome to the Bayesian and Causal Bayesian Networks course. The causality chapter, section 1, Bayesian Networks are not causal. Okay, so a summary of mainly what we did in the first chapter. The goal was to find from data the correct factorization of the joint probability distribution. The question was how? Well, by finding the conditional independencies I of P from the map, I'm not talking about structure learning there, we did it more optimally here. We're just saying how we, we can check if a factorization matches the distribution. And then we said that, well, any distribution whose local independencies are included in IP, that will work. But then we saw that there could be several of them. Which one to choose? Then we introduced the notion of minimal I maps. But then still we saw that several of them, like here, both of them, they can all work. The difference is just the direction of the arrows. So what sh which one should I choose? And the answer is that, well, they're all basically the same in terms of independencies. So no difference unless we provide a different semantics to the edges. So let's see what do I mean by those uh, semantics, different semantics. We go with an example, causality. Assume that uh, using the COVID data set, this is our main COVID data set problem that we have been working with, we obtain the following structure. Okay, and also assume that the above graph is a p-map for the true joint distribution p of random variables. So perfect, it's a, it's a p-map, there's no additional independencies that I was not able to capture here. Now, can this network be used to answer in queries where we control a certain variable? For example, what is the probability of fever if wearing masks become mandatory? Okay, or what's the probability of COVID or cough in such a situation? Can I answer such a query using this Bayesian network just based on the fact that it's a p-map and determine this? Okay, now note that this is not the same as given that like the individual is wearing a mask. It's if kind of we force masking and we want to see the result. Okay, to dive deeper into that, consider two random dependent variables, say fever and COVID. We have two options for factorizing their joint distribution or equivalently representing them as a Bayesian network. So one is from COVID to fever, and we know they are depending on each other, so we know that there should be an arrow. We're not considering the case of having them as isolated nodes. So one is in this way, and then the factorization will be P of F condition on C times P of C, and the other one is the other way around, C condition on F times P of F. Both of them have a global set of conditional independencies being empty, and that means that they are I equivalent. So I can just denote the, the P DAG equivalence class as an undirected edge between them. Okay? So both of these are correct in terms of providing a valid factorization for my Bayesian network. And this is exactly why Bayesian networks are not causal. Because causality is in one direction. Either A causes B or B causes A. So we cannot read the arrows in a Bayesian network as causal links. And this is a mistake that sometimes happens in the literature. A Bayesian network is obtained from data, for example, and then there is a high tendency to read the arrows as causal links, like fever is causing COVID. So what does it take to read statistical dependence as causal dependence then? For example, in the case of fever and COVID, what does it mean if we read the following link as causal? Then we are concluding from the fact that fever statistically depends on COVID, that it also causally depends on COVID. More generally, this type of interpretation means to read a conditional probability, P of X condition on Y1 to Yn, and I'm assuming that it's not equal to P of X, meaning that the two are not independent, they are dependent, to read this, or to interpret this, as X is also caused by Y1 to Yn. But 
we know that the above relation just means that the value of x is associated with the values of y1 to yn. Sometimes we could just write down the opposite as well, like y1 to yn condition and x wouldn't equal to y1 to yn. So this does not mean causality. Still, identifying causal relationships is highly desired. How to do it? And also, what do all this have to do with controlling or intervening a variable? And we'll see more of this in the next lecture. So the goal is ideally to get from data to the question of what is causing what. This is somehow a philosophical question. I will get more to this in the next lecture.